What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back today with a confession. I think I have a hoarding problem. Instead of hoarding like normal stuff that you throw into your house, like clothes or cups or coffee or whatever, it seems that I have accidentally started a collection of cars and once the ball has started rolling, I can't seem to stop. Another one just got delivered today and we have yet another one still coming today. Somebody has to stop me. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all of the cars I currently have, and then you guys can tell me if I actually have a problem. This one right here is one that most of you would probably not have bought, and I probably shouldn't have either. It's a 2007 Chrysler 300. No, it is not a Hemi. Nope, it's not even the good 3.5 high output V6. It is the 2.7. And I know you're probably thinking, sludge, engine damage from sludge. No, no, actually, no. This thing has a beautiful Carfax report on it. I mean, really good. Somebody, if I remember right, it's a one owner and somebody took exceptional care of it. I'm talking trans fluid, brake fluid, all the fluids, oil filters have been changed every 3,000 miles on point. This car was well cared for. I bought it because it looked really solid Listed as a run and drive, 136,000 miles, so not bad on the miles. It doesn't have hail damage, which is kind of unusual for an Oklahoma car. Very nice condition. Inside and out, well, this car holds a dirty little secret. There is a giant hole in the oil pan, and I don't know the condition of the engine at this point. It could be completely toast, which sucks. Like I said, this engine, transmission, this thing has been well maintained, way better than most have been serviced. This thing has been cared for, it's been loved, and it's a shame. These two sevens were never known to be great motors, but if you took care of them and really changed the oil, like every 3,000 miles, these, were, these could be good motors. And I do believe that's what this was, but uh, it had a little bit of damage that I couldn't see underneath. And at this point, I don't know for sure if the engine is any good, or if it's toast. Next, I got a 1998 Pontiac Grand Prix GT. Another thing worth noting is most of these cars have been purchased sight unseen, meaning I did not go and look at the cars in person. I saw them online and just took a chance and bid on them. This one, they were asking $1,500 for. I kept winning it. Nobody else seemed to want it. There's probably a reason for that. And I'm the one that won this beauty for, I think, $500. Let's pop the hood on this real quick. You got your 3800, what, Series 3? Series 2, sorry. Series 2. She's a little dirty. She's real dirty, actually. Yeah, I can't wait to find out if this one runs. This one actually belonged to Carvana. There's a paper inside. It was traded into Carvana, so... Uh, this one should this one should be interesting. I'm kind of excited because I've always loved the Grand Prix. I wish it was a GTP, but I'll take a GT for 500 bucks. I don't see how we could go wrong on a car that was listed as a run and drive. And next to it, we've got a 1992 Saturn SL2. How many of you remember the SL2? I have no idea how many miles are on this. I know nothing about. I know nothing about the majority of these cars. I just bought them. I know it's got a little hole in the fender there. You know, it's plastic, so it's no big deal. Like, literally, it's just a plastic fender. It's super easy to, to replace. I probably won't replace it. I probably won't do anything to it. Um, I, I, assuming it runs and drives, I don't know. Uh, we've got hail damage all over. Very severe hail damage. I mean, <laughs> all over. Oh, a little bit of damage back there, too. Twin cam. It is an automatic version. I know, I wish it had been a stick shift. Yeah, you got a quarter damage back here, too. The great thing about like the plastic damage is these are just skins that just instead of having to drill out spot welds and weld things back there you, you just unbolt them and put them back together this is a very original little car <laughs> it's just i love my old saturns man i really do uh, automatic transmission a little bit concerning you got those old school automatic seat belts yeah uh what are the miles on this bad boy uh 196 wow oh man Boy, you've put in uh, you've put in work, haven't you? Let's pop the hood and take a look at that little. What is it? A 1.9, I believe, on these. Uh, I think it's a 1.9. 
Yes, it is. 1.9 twin cam. Looks pretty decent for the age. Saturn power module. Yeah. Hey, these were uh, these were great little get up and go cars, man. They could move for as small as they are. Next, it's kind of a rare breed anymore. This is a 1998 Pontiac Transport Montana. That's right. It was a Pontiac Transport Montana when the Montana was like a, a, a an option package on the Transport minivan. This thing, I don't remember how much I paid for it. Honestly, I'd have to look up the prices on all of these, but you could bet this was probably five or 600 bucks. That one, if I remember right, was around 175. I don't know, I'll have to go back and look. But Pontiac Traction Control, oh wow. Uh, you see a theme going on here. I've got a lot of cars from the 80s and the 90s here. This actually looks very promising. This one I'm really excited about. I can't wait to actually bring this to the channel and see if she's a uh, a good one. I just, I got a hunch. I do. I, I think, look at that interstate battery. That's usually a good sign. When you, when you see an interstate battery, it usually means somebody was maintaining it. 3,400, that sequential fuel injection. Generally, pretty good vehicles, man. Uh, take a quick peek at the interior. How many miles are on this, too? I don't know. Uh, let's see what it looks like back here. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is nice. What is this? Is that a... Oh, shit. That's a, that's a mouse trap. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that sucker about got me. She's got power, too. You got nice third row. It smells good. Yeah, this... I, I just... I got a hunch. This is going to be a good one. I could be wrong. It could have a bad transmission. I don't know. But it's supposed to be a run and drive. How many miles? 150. 150,000 miles on the odometer. Oh, you know what? I got a Carfax on this one. Carfax one owner vehicle. Look at that. One owner vehicle. Very nice. Uh, 26 detailed records available. Not salvaged, by the way. All right. This should be a good one, guys. I'm really excited about this one. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, you should keep this or you should keep that and you should hold on to this and use it for this. Guys, I got too many personal cars as it is. These are cars for you. These are YouTube cars. It's cars for me to bring to the channel, remind you that these cars still exist. If you're looking for them, you can find some of these old school 80s and 90s vintage kind of vehicles that are still, you know, they may need a little work, but they're still here and you can buy them cheap. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's see what's next. How about a 1998 GMC Jimmy 4x4 with, I don't know how many miles, but I seem to remember this one being over 250. This one's got some miles on her, guys. Uh, what I paid for it, this is gonna be another cheap one. I don't believe I've got more than $800 into this. Um, it's a three owner Carfax vehicle, so it's also not salvaged, all right? Not salvaged, clean title. The body looks good, except for a little ding in the hood. The tires look great. The interior, I mean, really, the interior, this is not, oh, okay, I might hold on to this. No, I won't, no, I won't, I won't, I won't. But man, I'd like to. I have always had a soft spot for the Blazers and the Jimmies, guys. I mean, since I was a little kid, I have always loved these. A little concerning, there's a lot of mildew up top, a lot of mildew. Meaning it's obviously sat somewhere for a long time, but this is supposed to be a run and drive. And have you ever seen a quarter of a million mile Jimmy with seats this nice? This, this thing held up well. The switches, honest to God, if you didn't tell me that this thing had a quarter million miles on it, I would assume this is probably a 70, 80,000 mile vehicle. Honestly, look at the shifter, the normal wear spots, the console lid right there. Kenwood stereo. This is really nice. Um, Carfax, hail damage reported, 42 service records, three owners, last reported odometer reading of 242, 153. It's got the four, excuse me, the 4.3. Um, uh, what is going on there? Uh-oh. Well, that's no bueno. Almost, I wonder if somebody came in here and started messing with this, huh? Oh, I sure hope not. Let me see if I can... Maybe we can pop this hood. 
just get a glimpse of what it looks like underneath. Uh oh. Well, that one's gonna need some help. Not to worry, we got videos of all of these cars individually coming soon. Moving on. This one is relatively easy. It's an 89 Honda Civic. And I, I don't know why I bought it, but this one was, a, it was another one of those like $175 cars. It's done. Uh, the pillar is done. The roof is done. It's damaged all down the side. It's damaged on the front. It's got 147,000 miles on the odometer. This one, I can tell you, I mean, again, bought it sight unseen, but this one does run. And I don't know if it drives, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. It looks to me like it would drive, except for all the greasy handprints all over the hood. I, I don't know what that's all about, but still, looking at it, she needs a little help, guys. This is not one that I expect to be put back on the road. I bought it because it just fits the theme of the channel lately, which is a bunch of old 80s and 90s vehicles. The interior is in relatively good shape, aside from there being shards of glass everywhere. We got to get a video out on this one soon and find out if it actually runs and drives. You got your manual crank windows, seats in good condition, dashboard is in really good condition. Like this thing is, this thing is actually pretty decent as far as a parts car is concerned. And if it does run and drive well, this would be a great, oh, the hood doesn't even latch. Oh yeah, this is a clean little car. A newer diehard battery, R134 air conditioning. That should be interesting to see if the AC works. Yeah, this would be a great parts car for somebody, assuming it does run and drive. So definitely drop a comment below. Maybe you would be interested in this as a parts car. Maybe you've got something you could use the powertrain and maybe some of the interior components out of, because I think that's all this is going to be suited for. You can email me, auto auction rebuilds with an S at the end, at gmail.com. I'll probably be sending several of these to Copart in this coming week. And the next one we have is, I believe it's a 2001 Nissan Maxima. It's lacking in the aesthetics department quite a bit. This is one we already did a video on. Definitely go check it out. Uh, the video did all right. I mean, considering it's it's just an old Maxima and it's pretty well beat up. It's been well used. I think she's got quite a bit of miles on her too. We took her out for a test drive and it didn't go well. Uh, we, had a, we had transmission problems. I've had to pull some of the batteries um, and put them on charge and, and try to rejuvenate them. Some of the batteries were just no good. This one uh, was idling all over the place and then it wouldn't shift at all. It went, in, it went into limp mode and I didn't even check the trans fluid because I already know what the problem is. It is not the transmission on this, I guarantee you. It is the throttle position sensor sitting over there. I've had this happen on a Maxim of mine before, did the exact same thing. And we have a code for the throttle position sensor. So, um, we might as well go ahead and replace that and see if that fixes the problem. If it does, then what we have is a car that somebody, somebody abandoned. You can see it's got like crap all over the top of the engine. It sat for a long period of time. Somebody abandoned this car most likely because they thought it had a bad transmission. When in reality, all it probably needs, I'm not saying for hundred percent certainty that it is the TPS, but I'm about 95% certain. I've got a $60 TPS in there. I'm gonna slap that on, only take about 10, 15 minutes to put it on. I'll bet you the idle is fixed, and I'll bet you this car shifts and drives down the road just fine. May not be a beautiful car, may not be the best car on the road, but it can be a decent car for somebody, put it back on the road, and it's got a little bit more life in it. I don't know how much I've got into it, but again, all, all these cars I paid next to nothing for, so I would be willing to bet I probably have I probably have maybe $600 into this car. I still think that's a pretty fair deal. Next, we have a 2006 Nissan Xterra. Unfortunately, the video didn't do all that well on this one, and, and I'm kind of sad about that. We already did a video about it, and we already know some of the things that are wrong with it. I actually really like this little SUV. It's a two-wheel drive. It's a base model. It's like it's really a base model. It has no power options at all. 
it needs a set of tires and I bought a set of tires where I did the right thing. I like this one enough that I think this one's putting, worth putting a little money into and fixing up and trying to put back on the road. It's got some miles on it, if I remember right, but it seemed like a good little vehicle. It has a charging problem. The alternator is bad. I went ahead and purchased an alternator. Uh, they're expensive. If you go to like your local auto parts store, they are not cheap. They're around $300 for an alternator. And the labor to do one of these is not cheap either because the alternator is at the very, very bottom. From what I understand, the alternator on this is generally a bear to do, but I've watched some YouTubes. And if you take that wheel off, you can access what you need through the wheel well there, and it makes changing that a lot easier. So I do have a set of tires for this. I have a new alternator for this, and I think that's gonna be everything that this one needs to get back on the road, aside from a good detail, which, you know, she's a little dirty. This one I paid $900 for. I don't know how much out the door, probably something like $1,300, $1,400 out the door, or something like that. Uh, this one though, I do like it. And I do think this deserves to be put back together. So we're gonna throw the alternator on it, assuming that fixes things. We'll then throw the set of tires on it. And as long as it does what it's supposed to do, after that, we can send it into detail, get the paint and body cleaned up, get that interior cleaned up. And then this one will be ready to go down to auction. Next, this is probably my biggest regret yet. Uh, again, sight unseen, as with the rest of these, sight unseen. Uh, this one I paid way too much for, way too much for. It's listed as it starts, but immediately dies. Yeah, this one just doesn't run. Um, it's not listed as a driver at all. And for whatever reason, I paid too much for it. This is from a different place called ACV Auctions. Normally I use Copart or I use IAA, but sometimes for like my little sports cars, hot rods or whatever, T-Bucket, the Ford Focus ST, these kinds of things. Sometimes I use that auction for other cars. I found this for next to nothing. It was, I don't know, probably $600, $700. And I was like, great. Well, there is a small auction fee. The auction fees are very cheap at ACV auctions in comparison to some of the other places. So with the auction fee, you know, that racked it up another couple hundred dollars, but then there was a transportation fee. I didn't realize how much it was gonna cost to transport it. By the time we were done, I guarantee you I promise you, I've got somewhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars into this 05 Nissan Altima with the 3.5 E6, and I'm pretty sure this has a CVT transmission, body damage down the side. The interior is absolutely disgusting. I've seen worse. I've seen worse. You guys have seen worse too. It's just really dirty. The problem I have with this car is number one, I still haven't tried to start it or drive it. I don't, I don't know anything about this car at this point. Um, could it be cleaned up? Yes, that's a seat cover that somebody had thrown on it. Uh, sure, it could be cleaned up. Uh, that costs money. I'm certain there's something wrong with it. So that's gonna cost money. And the fact of the matter is this car is not worth I have too much in it. Just just from purchasing it and bringing it down here, I already have more in the car than I'm probably gonna be able to sell it for. So this is probably, I hate to do this, and it's very rare that I just drop a car, but this one I'm probably just gonna send to auction, take whatever I can get out of it, cut my losses, and move on. Now we will do a dedicated video on all of these cars, including this one, because I wanna know. I wanna know, does it run? Will it drive? Does it have a bad transmission? Is it got something wrong with the engine? I don't know, but we got to figure that out. So I will do a dedicated video on this one, and I'm sure I'm gonna I'm sure I'm gonna lose pretty big on this. But sometimes that's just the way it goes. This one is another stray that just showed up today, a 1983 Chevy Camaro that is in extremely rough condition, that is not as listed. Um, this was supposed to be a runner. This does not run. <laughs> this does not run. And uh, from the smell of the fuel tank, I'm gonna just throw out an educated guess that this has not run in a very, 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 very long time. The only reason I wanted it was for the body. I know what you're thinking. Oh God, Randy's about to do something crazy. Maybe, maybe not. The body lines are super straight on this car. I don't think this car has ever been wrecked. I'd like to run a Carfax on it just to see what it says. But this is an interesting car because it's a four cylinder. 
I did not know that Camaro ever made a four cylinder until like modern day. I didn't know that was ever a thing. It's in good shape on the outside. The inside is where things start getting really rough. The door cards, they're actually decent. The seats, not so much. The center console lid, not so much. The dashboard, however, is in very good shape. But again, it's the padding on top where you can see it has sat in the sun for ages and it just rotted it out. So, I mean, it's got a lot going for it. It shows 78,000 miles on the odometer. Headliner is ragged out. Honest to God, I would be inclined to believe that maybe, maybe this had 78,000 miles on it just because of how nice the body is. Uh, and certain parts of the interior look really nice. I think the majority of the damage on this car, including this, this rust, this is still surface. This can still be sanded, but it doesn't have long left before it's gonna turn into a problem. This could be a real 80,000 mile four cylinder Camaro. Oops, hood shocks are, are gone. There is your Iron Duke, your little 2.5 liter. It's even got air conditioning and it's very clean under here. Very, very clean. You spray all this dust off. This is very clean. I'm telling you, it could be. I'm not saying it is, but it could be. Um, as far as it being a four cylinder, I think that makes it pretty rare. Am I thinking about doing a build on this? Yes, I'm considering possibly ripping this thing apart and turning this into something. Maybe collar it blueprint engines. There's a lot of ifs, maybe some days. I'm not gonna get too excited about this yet. And I don't want you to either, because as you can see, I have a lot of projects on my plate and it's gonna be quite a while before I can jump into doing something as big as what this car is going to require. So now we're gonna walk into the shop because I've got more cars in there. <laughs> and I've got another one that's supposed to be delivered today. Another tea bucket. I did it again. I didn't learn my lesson from the first one. So I've got another one coming and it's supposed to be here today. If it shows up in time, I'll put it in this video. Let's walk in the shop and see what I've got hiding in here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me if I have a problem. A 1985 Honda Accord 1800 with 62,000 original miles on the odometer. A 1984 Chevrolet Citation that had been sitting for years and years and years as a non-runner and we got it running and it tried to run me over in fact. Um, this Accord right here was also a non-runner. It had also been parked for many years, carbureted, of course. We got it running on video. We got this one running on video too. I'm ordering a back glass. In fact, I found one. I was only able to find one back of glass for this. And we're gonna drive it to the city and get that glass replaced. The Citation is sitting here mainly waiting on a steering column. It is broken in a million pieces and it makes the car undrivable. In this box, I paid 50 bucks and then $50 shipping. I should have an entire steering column with steering wheel, along with four hubcaps. That's right, the original 13 inch Chevrolet Citation hubcaps, period, correct. They cost me $100. Four hubcaps for this car were $100 from a junkyard. Steering column was 50, so we've got that going. Next, here's the set of tires that I told you I had ready for the Nissan Xterra. I've got four brand new, I didn't cheap out, brand new tires ready to go. And then next we have uh, this one. This one does not run. I bought it that way. It was listed as a non-runner. It still doesn't run. I have tinkered with it a little bit and uh, she, just, she just doesn't go. It sounds like it wants to. It's just not quite there. I'm 99% certain this is a carburetor issue. This is a 1929 Ford that has been converted into a little, uh, like a little street rod type of deal. It's actually, pre it's pretty damn decent looking guys. It really is. This is not bad. It's got a little, I believe that's a three speed automatic transmission. You got an old school uh, equalizer and stuff there. I'm not gonna tell you too much about this. You've got some legit centerline, old school centerline wheels right there. Back here, I've got the battery charging because it's dead. Looks like you got a trans cooler back there. You got a fuel cell right there. And the engine, well, I could tell you what it is, but I'm not going to. I'll let you guys throw your guesses below. Most of you will probably never figure it out because this is an old school build. Like this is an old, 
for some of you folks that are older, you're gonna see this engine, you already know what it is. You already know what it is. It's got a very unique valve cover uh, as far as how many, uh, <laughs> how many screws are in it. You should be able to look at this and get a pretty good idea what this came out of. I'll tell you this much, it's from the 60s. That engine is, uh, it's pretty limited from like 64 to 67, something like that. Yeah, this, I'm really excited about getting going and I've got a bucket full of parts for it that I think is gonna make this one run. Next and probably last, unless my new tea bucket comes in, a legitimate original 1925 Ford Model T that sat for a minimum of 10 years and we got it running in the very first video. Now, since that video, I've done a lot of work to it. I've put a lot of work into it and I've got it to where it runs pretty well. Fuel system is trash, the carburetor is gummed up. I have taken the fuel system apart and I've got a I've got a bucket of parts for this thing as well, guys. I got a bucket of parts for this because I want in the very near future to put this thing back together and get this on the road. We are going to rebuild the carburetor. We're going to rebuild the fuel system. We're going to put new inner tubes, new tube liners, new tires. And I think at that point, that one's gonna be ready to go. Right here, I've got the new tires, all four of them. These are, <laughs> I spent some money on this car. It cost me $1,200 in parts. Most of the parts for it are actually, I don't know if you can see that far up, but they're sitting on top of the Chevy Citation. So as you can see, we've got a shop full it's full, full of parts, full of tires, full of wheels, full of cars. Auto auction rebuilds is busier than we have ever been. And I can't wait to get these cars on the road and do some individual videos of these for you. Now, if you thought we were done, we're not because this is another one of my great deals. Let's fire it up. <laughs> my 2021 Ford Mustang GT California Special that we picked up from Copart for 28 grand. The video series on this car has done phenomenal on the channel, guys. The first video has hit almost 200,000 views. The second video was just released and it's already got almost 100,000 views. So far, the car has been great. We have been loving it. In fact, my fiance has pretty much taken the car over. This car is paid for. It's the only car in my driveway that is actually paid off. We owe no money on this car, paid cash for it, and it has been an absolute pleasure to drive. Obviously, because it's the California Special, it is the premium package, 10-speed automatic. The only thing it's missing is the display. It doesn't have that nice, fancy digital display. But there she is, guys. It's got the adaptive exhaust, too, which is really nice. You can, uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. We'll go into the settings. We've got 4,200 miles on it now. Can you believe that? We've been just, uh, we've just been driving the living hell out of it. Let's go into settings, exhaust. Let's go to track. There we go. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, I'm here to tell you, I love this car. Uh, like I said, Jessica pretty much took it from me, but so far, so good. Next, there's a new one in the driveway. This is not a, uh, this is not a, an insurance car, neither is this. But uh, look at this. This is my power, uh, power wagon. Listen to this cold start. Oh yeah. And if that's not enough, my latest purchase, I just got this yesterday, is my 2022 Ram TRX. Uh, I am totally in love with this, although I think the exhaust could be a little bit louder. You guys tell me. It sounds all right. It sounds all right. But... Okay, it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. Not too shabby. Oh yes, you gotta love the TRX, man. The T-Rex, she is a bad, bad truck. Yes, it's a level two dedicated video coming on this because I know everybody's wanting to see it. We got a lot of uh, really loud, obnoxious, gas-guzzling American 
V8s sitting in my driveway, but we're not done yet because I got another insurance car in my backyard. So this is my exceptionally low miles, an extremely cheap 1987. It's a, I forget what it is. It's, it's called a lean machine. It's a GM Chevrolet P30, and it's in absolutely wonderful condition. New tires, front and back, it came this way. It's from California originally. And the generator only had 74 hours on it when I got it. So 25,000 original miles on this bad boy. It took quite a bit, but I think we've got a lot done on this. And I'm not gonna give too much away because I don't know for sure when this video is coming out. And this particular video has not come out at all as of the making of this video. I have uh, spent several days really working on this thing, including running ozone through it to make it smell a little nicer. We found that there at one point were mice in here. Listen to this though. I will give you a little sneak peek in case, in case the video on this hasn't been released yet. Look how easy this starts and it hasn't been started at all today. Carbureted. Look at that. There's your tack. Listen to how good she runs. And if that's not enough, I'll give you one more. Look at all the lights coming on in here. Refrigerator, stove. Here's your generator, which now has, what, 80, 94 hours on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I may, be, I may be using this. Oh, yes. Air conditioning. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. So there it is, the 1987, I think it's an 87, uh, Chevrolet P30 28-foot motorhome that I got for, I don't remember what the winning bid is, like $2,000, $2,100, something like that. And if you think this is it, if you think finally we're done, this is the last vehicle, there can't be any more. <sighs> well, you're wrong. There's more. And, uh, I'm gonna have to go drive an hour to show that one to you right now. All right, I decided to take the T-Rex out for a spin, man. It'll be my first like long drive with it. Let's just do a quick, I'm not gonna be too hard on her, but, but a quick little launch, right? All right, here we go. Whoa. Oh shit. I got gas cans leaking, I think in the back. Oh my God. I'll be completely honest with you. I was not prepared for the G-Force. Oh, thank God, thank God. Thank God it didn't leak. Nope, they didn't leak. Oh man, damaged my air filters for the, for the AAR headquarters property, but they didn't leak. Wow, okay. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> oh man um maybe i should be maybe i should be a little more careful oh i forgot they were back there guys i forgot they were back there i put this thing in uh in sport mode and uh whoo yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. Let's just let's just gingerly get there. Whew. All right. Let's get down to AR headquarters so we can check out the last vehicle that has been delivered. All right, so it's time to end this video, guys. This has been this has been kind of dragging on, but there's a lot of cars, man. And I'm, I'm excited about most of them, not all of them. But here we go, last one. You already saw that one. This one just got dropped off to me. Like this just got here. It's been like three days since I had originally started filming this video and I just didn't want to end it without being able to include this. I know nothing about it. The auction listing didn't say anything about it other than it runs and it drives. And this one, 
This one was 11,500. This one was 14,500, something like that. I think if, no, no, they gave me a $200 credit. So like 14, two or 14, three, something like this. The price difference between these two was negligible, especially considering the difference in quality between this one and this one. Uh, I got dedicated videos on all this stuff coming, like I said earlier. Stay tuned for that. I can tell you this, this engine says ATK high performance engines. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say that uh, I don't think this is stock. It's got a high rise aluminum metal brock intake. Got a big old Holly carburetor. Looks like a Probably, I think it's a 650. And we got an HEI distributor. We got some massive headers, just long tubes running straight out the side of it there. Um, you got a alternator way down there. This is a electric fan too. Wow. This is, a, this is actually a pretty nice setup. Weld racing wheels all the way around. Yep, look how massive these are, guys. Mickey Thompson Sportman tires. Look how wide these tires are absolutely insane i can't wait to bring you content on all of these awesome vehicles i hope you enjoyed today's video it's hot so i'm gonna get out of here do me a favor if you enjoyed today's video hit the thumbs up button and let me know that you're enjoying the content if you didn't well go ahead and hit the thumbs down button drop your comments below and if you would could you share the video on your social media platforms with your friends? It goes a long way to help support the channel, assuming, of course, you think your friends would be interested in seeing this kind of content. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, because there's a lot of videos on a lot of different cars coming, and I don't want you to miss it. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon in the next one. So did you stay to the end? If, if you stayed to the end, then this is for you. All right, I appreciate those of you that actually watch the videos and don't skip around. So I think this is the least I can do for you. Ooh, boy, that, that sucker's loud. <laughs>